is Indian country today. Esquilly, yes, eh. Thank you for joining us. I'm Patty Dalahungba. Arizona State Senator Jamasita Peshlakai is calling for the federal government to address the lack of water on many tribal lands. Several tribes do not have access to clean water infrastructure, making it difficult for them to follow the guidelines for washing hands frequently. In her opinion piece, Peshlakai says the lack of critical infrastructure on the Navajo Nation and other reservations has exasperated the pandemic in Indian country. It's yet another indication of the centuries of failed Indian policies and broken treaties, she says. Peshlakai is a Democrat and is a member of the Navajo Nation. Her op-ed comes at a time when her tribe has more than 2,000 positive cases of COVID-19. That despite a daily curfew and a weekend stay-at-home order from the president of the Navajo Nation. Peshlakai says both the federal and state governments must work, quote, transparently and respectfully with the indigenous people and their governments to ensure access to clean water for all future generations. The Crazy Horse Memorial will reopen on May 18th. The monument is located in Custer County, South Dakota, and was closed on March 25th due to the pandemic. The owners say the safety precautions are being taken to protect the health of staff and guests. The evening laser light show will resume on May 22nd. The carving in the side of a mountain features the face of Crazy Horse with his arm outstretched over the mane of his horse. It's been under construction for several years and is a popular tourist attraction in the area. The site is overseen by the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation. For the latest numbers of COVID positive tests in Indian country, let's go to Jordan Bennett Begay, our Washington editor. Jordan? Yat e Patty, yat e shikis do shidene. So as of this morning, the total positive confirmed cases within the Indian health system stands at 3,697 cases and 110 deaths. Again, that is a total of 3,697 positive confirmed cases and 110 deaths within the Indian health system. And these numbers are according to you know, Indian Country Today's database that we are keeping track of and taking submissions from the Google form and uh, from individuals who are emailing um, the Indian Country Today staff, Patty. Um, and a lot of these numbers do come from, you know, the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma reported four new cases within their nation. Um, the Mandan Hidatsa and Arikara Nation up in North Dakota had an additional one case. Um, but most of their um, individuals who were infected are recovering from this. Um, the Navajo Nation did report 85 new cases and six additional deaths. And uh, Mashpee Wampanoag did report um, 11 positive cases within their community. And what's really surprising about uh, you know, the numbers is the White Mountain Apache saw an increase in their cases. They have 99 new positive cases on their uh, Fort Apache Indian Reservation in Arizona. Um, they did report three deaths, but we have to make sure we don't double count those deaths with what's already in our database, Patty. The numbers just continue to uh, keep rising. So it, it doesn't in, seem to indicate in Indian country, at least, that uh, we are close to flattening the curve, or, or is it? Yes, no, that's correct. And a lot of these, you know, tribes are still trying to take measures and encouraging tribal citizens to, uh, you know, to wash their hands, to wear face cover. Um, like in Gallup, New Mexico, they're still on lockdown until Thursday, May 7th at noon. Um, so tribal uh, leaders are doing the best they can to keep their community safe. Well, there's a lot, a lot to digest in Indian country. And what are we hearing from tribes in reaction to the release of the $8 billion for the CARES Act? Yeah, some of them are very um, happy. Yesterday, uh, President Trump did visit with uh, two tribal uh, nations, uh, Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis from the Gila River Indian community in Arizona and Vice President Myron Leiser at the Navajo Nation. And um, a lot of it, you know, they were trying to focus on MMIW uh, yesterday, but these tribal nations were like wanting to tell them that they need help. They need the money fast and quick and, you know, want to see that. All right. So yes, uh, he signed that proclamation for the missing and murdered indigenous women. Thank you so much, Jordan Ben Gay. Yeah, Patty. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back. Each year, millions of American students learn about Thanksgiving and how a tribe of Indians shared a meal with the pilgrims, thus creating the first Thanksgiving. But what's the real story behind this most American of holidays? Cedric Cromwell is the chairman of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe in Massachusetts. He joins us today, and it was his tribe that first met those pilgrims. Welcome, Chairman. Good day, my friend. Well, just a few weeks ago, the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe learned its lands were being disestablished. Chairman, how does the tribe that greeted the pilgrims end up in this position of having your federal lands taken out of trust? Patty, greetings and thank you for having me on, on, on this uh, broadcast, very important. We're in the 400th year anniversary of the landing of the Mayflower, which the pilgrims came to our homelands in 1620. And my tribal nation, the Wampanoag Nation, uh, greeted them and helped them through their first harsh winters and taught them how to thrive and survive on this land. And so America's got this big celebration happening for the 400th year anniversary that involves the pilgrims in my tribe. And, you know, talking about a slap in the face on March 27th, I receive a call from the Department of Interior BIA, and I'm thinking that they want to talk to us about the pandemic, you know, what we're going through and how we can help. And, you know, that's how naive I was on a Friday at, at 2 p.m. Um, you know, um, the acting BIA, BIA director calls me in, in at Glenn Melville, and we're talking. He says, as you know, I've only been in this job for 30 days. And I'm like, what is he apologizing to me for? And he says, are you available to talk at 4 o'clock? And I said, I'm available now. And I said, oh, you want to meet with me and other tribal leaders to talk about the pandemic? And he said, no, only you. I said, about what? Uh, and he was stuttering. And he says, I said, well, who's going to be on call? The solicitor is and the director of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Daryl Account. So we got on the call at four o'clock. I had my vice chair and our tribal attorneys. And now this is four o'clock on March 27th in the midst of the pandemic. We are scrambling. Our people are afraid, nervous. Uh, you know, we're trying to keep peace within the community and, and see how we can get us through this uh, situation as a nation. And uh, Daryl Account gets on the phone and says, I have bad news. I've been informed by Secretary Bernhardt of the Department of Interior to take your land out of trust. And I said, why? And he says, because of a court ruling. There is no court ruling. Nothing exists. And I, I asked him to cite which court ruling because I'm involved in all our court situations. He says, I'm not an attorney. I'm just doing what I was told. And I, and I have to do this. And I said, well, when? I can't tell you. Why? Uh, I've been told to do this. And it was very machine-like and very robotic. I felt like I was speaking to the Terminator or Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I'll be back. You know, I'm taking your land. And that's all you need to know. So we filed a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction uh, against the United States Department of Interior, uh, Secretary Brian Hart. Uh, that following Tuesday, Judge Friedman heard, you know, our complaint and said, you know, listen, United States don't touch the tribe's land until mid-March, mid-May of 2020. Uh, you know, I'm going to look at this TRO PI. I want both sides, the interior to, as well as the tribe to brief this. And then he came back shortly after that, a few days later and said, you know what? The tribe had filed a lawsuit against the United States based on a September 18th, I'm sorry, September 8th, 2018 decision of saying, we no longer fit the definition of Indian. And whatever the Obama administration did, well, this administration doesn't agree with it. I mean, and it's the same attorneys that wrote our positive record of decision. Now they're saying, wait a minute, there, there's no justification. So it's pretty scary that this administration targeted us and, and tweeted about us. The president himself tweeted and said, you know, we're a uh, Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren made up tribe. And by supporting our bill HR 312 to reaffirm the Mashpee Reservation Reaffirmation Act is unfair to other Indian tribes. Congress don't support their bill. So, but again, you've got this history that's well documented. So I think for a lot of people who aren't familiar with all of the federal policies that, that created you know, tribes, and tribal governments. In uh, 1934, there was the uh, um, Indian Reorganization Act, and it established at that point in time, and it had the words, you know, the, that tribes currently under uh, a federal trust, uh, that was one definition. 
your tribe was not federally recognized until when? So uh, we were federally recognized in 2007. The Indian Reorganization oh. Act, yeah. Okay, so what happened in 1934? Why wasn't the, the, your tribe a federally recognized tribe? Well, see, so there was no such thing as federal recognition, as we know, um, back then. Uh, well, it, was, it was relationships between the federal government and tribes. And so we clearly documented all our relationships with the federal government from Carlisle Indian boarding schools to medical funding from the United States government to education assistance. Matter of fact, Jedediah Morrison came out in 1823 to look at the state of the state of East Coast tribes and said, you know, the Wampanoag Nation's amazing. They run all the sea uh, firing business, the whaling business, which was massive for this country. And if we put them on the trail of tears, if we remove them from the East Coast, the economic engine will be greatly impacted. And so that was an act of Congress saying, we are not going to remove the tribe. You know, Collier, who was in charge of Indian Affairs, uh, visited all the tribes and said, you know, what this country and what the settlers are doing to Indian nations is an atrocity. It's a, it's a travesty you know, from raping and pillaging to stealing to abusing to killing. You name it, Indian tribes are under the biggest assault. So in 1934, he championed uh, the Congress to say, you've got to pass the new Indian deal, which was called the IRA. Three distinct areas under federal jurisdiction. Number one, number two, Indians that are descendants that of that same tribe that are still living on the same land as of 1934 and prior. That's what my tribe came under. Uh, you know, under the Obama administration, they put us under clause two. And number three is half-bloods. And the Indian reorganization deal was not put in place to nibble around the edges. It was like, we've just, this country has disenfranchised tribes. We know that tribes are written into the United States Constitution as well. Americans don't realize that. They don't understand their own history. And so here we are with the administration today that is clearly working overtime against my tribe. They are like working so hard. And one would say, why are they doing this? Well, we're in Massachusetts and 200 years before the United States even went out west, we had already been attacked and quote unquote conquered before the tribes out west. Um, we already had a big piece of the economy. And don't forget, this is where they landed to start the country. We, in fact, gave up the first piece of land to form Plymouth Colony, which was the anchor to, uh, you know, creating the United States of America. We live in a very wealthy, competitive environment. You know, this administration uh, has relationships to these billionaires with gaming enterprises. Rhode Island is next door to us. Matt Schlapp is the, uh, is the uh, lobbyist for Twin Rivers Casino, which is roughly about 20 miles from where we were building our casino. Uh, and Matt Schlapp's wife is Mercedes, who is Trump's senior policy, uh, uh, senior communication person. And he wrote all Trump's tweets against us. So here's a president tweeting against a Native American tribe. And I know that he just recently visited a couple of tribes, but obviously uh, that visit had to happen because COVID-19 is so important. We've invited him out to our reservation. We started this country as a tribe. A lot of people blame us, but you know, we started and met these first settlers. And here we are today on very pristine land. Uh, you know, from Twin Rivers to uh, the other casino that was going up in north of Boston, um, you know, Encore. Uh, Steve Wynn right. is the finance director for the Trump administration campaign. So you have all these billionaires that are friends of Trump's within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that are saying, hey, stop this tribe right now, let alone his disdain and hate towards Elizabeth Warren. He puts us all together and says, you know, let's destroy them. Well, let, let's go back to, again, the process. So you gained federal recognition, but didn't gain land. And there are a number of tribes that ha are landless tribes. They have that federal recognition, but they don't have the land base. So you, then you got this land. And is that land pure trust land or is it fee land? Pure trust land, um, roughly 320 acres, 146 acres in the city of Taunton, Massachusetts, where we had our famous female chief, Witamu, that lived there. Um, we had, we're a matriarchal society, so we've had many female chiefs, chiefs from the beginning of time, uh, you know, time immemorial. Um, and also our, our town of Mashpee, Massipi, uh, Long Waters, you know, in Massachusetts, mind you, is a Wampanoag name, it, Massachusetts it means land of many foothills. And so we have this land, it's trust land, 
uh, and it went into trust in 2015 under the Obama administration. Shortly after that, Neil Bloom, who is a billionaire, one of Trump's friends, applied for a gaming license in southeastern Massachusetts in the same region that our tribe is in. Mind you, in 2011, the Expanded Gaming Act passed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts had Section 91E, which was unique where commercial gaming bill respected the rights of a federal recognized tribe and carved out a region for our tribe, Region C. Neil Bloom applied for a license in Region C. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts said, no, we're staying with the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. They're federal recognized tribe, they're receiving land into trust, and they're going to be doing a facility. So we're staying with the tribe. Neil Bloom said, I'll show you how to stop a tribe. I'm going to sue the United States of America, the, the Department of Interior, and in fact, show that this tribe should not have land because of the whole Kachiri versus Salazar situation. In fact, he funded 26 plaintiffs out of the city of Taunton. Mind you, the city of Taunton, the city council voted for our tribe. We passed a referendum at 63% in favor of the tribe, which is higher than most presidential elections. And in fact, we have the Expanded Gaming Act in the Commonwealth that supports us. And so we have the whole mass delegation on board with the tribe. But this billionaire threw his weight around. The court then ruled and said, remand our land into trust decision back to the interior. Now the Obama administration comes in. I mean, the Trump administration comes in. They completely walk away from us in court. First time in modern day where the trustee walks away in court says, no, we're not defending you. We're not helping you. So what I'm pointing out is all these examples of billionaire influences in this administration not living up to their trust responsibility and working overtime to disestablish my tribe. So the termination error is alive and well under this administration. Well, it's still, you know, it still is, is still a mystery again, you know, why, again, back to 1934, because that's where these cases go back to with tribes being established and having um, IRA governments, Indian Reorganization Act governments put in place. And so again, what was it that prevented your tribe from from being established back then? You know, uh, think about it. First contact tribe helped establish this country. Matter of fact, Trump two years ago during the uh, Native American Heritage Month recognized the Wampanoag Nation and its contributions to forming this country from the Revolutionary War to land to establishing the country. The first treaty by our great chief Usamequin that provided 40 years of peace for the first settlers. And they're ignoring all that. It's so mysterious and we think it's because where we're located, uh, being the first contact, uh, the federal government not living up to the responsibility in, in you know, supporting our tribe, the Non-Intercourse Act, where they shouldn't have taken our land away, the federal government shouldn't have taken away, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts do whatever they wanted to us. So it was a, a, a job of uh, destroying our people, let alone when smallpox first hit. You know, so when we talk about a pandemic, we went through it back then, we're going through it now, and our federal government is still not helping us. Talk about a travesty. Chairman, you mentioned a large number for the land base you originally had, your traditional homelands. But today, how many acres were put into trust for your tribe? Traditionally, we had 14,000 square acres, which is incredible. Um, today, uh, 320 acres. 320 acres, and you've been planning that land now. What, besides the casino, what else are you planning to uh, build on that land? We're building 52 uh, houses for our tribal community on reservation land, low income tax credit housing. We've got our own zoning and our own permitting in place. And what we're doing is we're building capacity and density to serve our tribal members who live on Cape Cod. And the region's very expensive, third uh, expensive housing economy in the United States, California, New York, and then Massachusetts, let alone we're right on Cape Cod, which is a very wealthy region. Our tribal members can't afford to live there. The town of Mashpee, the zoning is one acre per house, well, a half an acre or less, and sometimes a quarter of an acre per each house so that we can build the capacity to house our people. If this land comes out of trust, we're then subject to the local zoning, which will not budge, and therefore we lose 52 houses and over $12 million. And more importantly, our people are displaced. They'll have no place to live. And even you yourself, you know, don't live on your reservation land because there are no homes there right now. You're still there. Are no home. homes there. Yeah. You know, we were the first Indian uh, governed district uh, in the United States. And in 1820, we were made 
a uh, town against our own will of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And certainly we were the most pristine land and all of a sudden the, the non-natives started really moving in and, and taking it. We, as long as the river flows and the wind blows, the Non-Intercourse Act was supposed to apply to our people. And non-natives were taking our land through taxation, which was illegal. Uh, the federal government never stepped in and helped out at all, and our people were begging for help. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in fact, helped you know uh, create that uh, dissemination of our land, taken away from our land. And you got to scratch your head and say, why was the United States not helping us out? And the, the thought process is, is because the country was formed in the East Coast, started there. They figured they conquered us already, and they assimilated us. And so therefore, you know, as we move out west, a lot of tribes had never, 200 years later, they were moving out west. They had never seen these folks. And they began to create, you know, these, these government to government relationships because it was pretty fierce at that time. Tribes were fighting the, these government people, government was fighting tribes. They already hit us 200 years prior to coming out west. And I think it was a conqueror's mindset where they felt, we're just gonna turn the blind eye to these guys, assimilation has happened. Let these states continue to abuse these tribes. And the United States would not would not uphold their responsibility. Well, again, it's just interesting to see this happening to your tribe when it's got a well-documented history. And, um, and here yet you are today now facing a May 20th court date that is being impacted by the coronavirus. So this court case will be heard, I guess, through a teleconference call? Through a teleconference call, only the uh, attorneys and you know, the justice can be on the phone, I mean, communicating live speaking, we have to listen, you know, so I think it's going to be open up to the public. Myself, I can listen, but I can't speak. I think it's important once this uh, phone number is published that the entire country, not just Indian country, but the entire nation tunes in. And the biggest thing that we're really looking for our our country to do, Indian country as well as non-natives, because we are American history. You know, when we talk about this great day of Thanksgiving, we help form it and form this country. And here our, our country is assaulting us. We're under attack by our own country. H.R. 312, uh, the, the bill that passed in Congress in May of 2019 to reaffirm the Mashpee Reservation Reaffirmation Act. We're requesting all of America to call their senators, uh, Senator Hoven over the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs as well as Mrs. Carhart. Yes. On the Senate side, because our bill is stuck at the Senate. McConnell saying, I'm not touching that because the president's telling not to touch it. Senator Hoven, when I last spoke to him, he said, you're the tribe from New Jersey, correct? And I looked at him and said, no, we're Massachusetts. We're not. Yeah, because you have a problem in New Jersey. I said, no, we're in Massachusetts. So it shows you from a trust responsibility how out of tune uh, Congress is around Indian affairs. We need to flood the telephone lines of Senator Hogan, North Dakota, as well right, as Mitch right. McConnell, all senators, wherever you live, and say, well, let's please see. pass H.R. 312. Let's talk a little very quickly about what you're doing with your tribal people there um, to make sure that they're protected during this uh, pandemic. The, uh, one of the things that caught my eye was that you are doing your own kind of contact tracing. You're asking your tribal members to keep their diary of, of people they've been in contact with. Oh, certainly. Uh, with COVID-19, we are right in the midst of the pandemic in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, over 40, uh, 300 deaths so far and climbing. Certainly in our tribe, 11 cases. And then there's been about three to four non-tribal spouse deaths, which is very sad. Uh, with having said that, you know, we posted signs at our community gathering places around social distance to really, really uh, inform our tribal members to, to heed the situation, this virus. And also, you're right, we have a tracking list that we've given to tribal members. You can pull it off the tribe's website it, to say who you've been around. If, in fact, uh, you have con- contracted COVID-19, You've got to list all the people that you've been around so that we can communicate with them, tribal and non-tribal, because we're doing our job to really prevent the spread of this. And I think our emergency preparedness director, Nelson Andrews, uh, has done a phenomenal job in setting up our command center, our EEOC. I declared a state of emergency when this kicked off. We are direct recipient with FEMA. We don't have to go through the state. We've got over 2,000 COVID-19 test cases. sets that have been delivered to our tribe that we're sharing with the IHS facility. IHS wasn't able to get those amount of exams. And we're testing people, whether you're tribal or non-tribal. And Chairman, you also have the Abbott Labs, so you can run those tests and uh, have an accurate count for your tribal people. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. 
And thank you for joining us today on our newscast. Uma umukatsi ukaliani. Take care of yourselves. Your life is precious. I'm Patty Thawahungba. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is Indian Country Today.